Good morning, EEI Ministry. Hey, we got a little praise and worship going in here right now. So we ought to go ahead and flow to the music right now. Come on. Let's see if we can pick it up a little more intense. Yes. Yeah. Take it on up. Oh God, how much you love him this morning. Go ahead and give him praise in the house right now. Come on. Oh God, we love you. God, we thank you. We thank you for this worship experience. But more important, God, we thank you for who you are, for your grace and for your mercy and what your son Jesus done on the cross at Calvary. Oh, yes. We ought to go ahead and clap our hands right now. Stomp our feet right now. If you can move any extremities, go ahead and move them right now and give God praise in the house right now. I think we got one more level we can take it to. I want to go ahead and see if we can hear this band and let it play its best. Let's see if we can get it. Come on, you ready? Give me a like and a love if you're ready to hear it right now. Here it come, here it come, here it come. Let's see it right now. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, shucks now. Come on. Give it praise right now. Give him worship in the house right now. Ah, oh, throw those hands up right now. Say, God, I thank you for another day. God, I thank you for another week. God, I thank you for bringing me through. Come on. So I can make it through. Come on, y'all. Come on. Yes. Ah. Oh, give it to him. Let's see if we can do it without the drums. Let's see if we can do it without the drums. Come on, watch this. Oh. No drums. Come on. Let's see if we can bring the drums back for you. Let's see if we can bring the drums back for you. Let's see. Come on, come on, come on. Here. I just want to hear drums. And no music. Let's see if we can just get the drums playing. Watch this. Oh, yeah. Uh, you feel that? Uh, that sounds good. Let's bring it all back. Come on. Oh, yes. Ah, yes, yes. It's good to be in the house and give it praise. Let's see if we can bring it all down for you. We go ahead and get on out of here. Come on. Amen. Give God some praise in the house for that worship experience to be able to come in and just to be able to share our heart with God. It's such a wonderful opportunity to be able to show him the love that he has shown us by allowing us to have his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen, man. It's awesome to be in the house of the Lord one more time to be able to share that love that God has for us and the opportunity to be able for God to be able to show us how much he really cares for us. And so we're thankful right now to be in the house of the Lord one more time. And tonight, I want to go ahead, this evening, I mean, I want to go ahead to give you a word, a, a word that is, that's been pressing in my spirit, a word that has been pressing in my spirit to be able to enlighten you on today. And sometimes we can be in a situation where we can feel as though we're dealing with something so big so heavy, so devastating, that we're wondering, how can we get through it? How can we make it through it? And today's message is for someone who's facing some type of wall, some type of structure, something that is trying to hold you. It could be a sickness, an illness, a financial issue, something that is holding you back. And God has a word for me to inspire you and encourage you today in this first Sunday in the month of September on this actual sixth day. And so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and, and pray and after we pray, we're gonna go ahead and get into this word and gonna bless someone out there today to be able to give you some encouragement, some enlightenment, to be able to help you through your obstacles that you're dealing with. 
Oh, great and mighty God, we come to you right now. We thank you, God, for this opportunity. God, we thank you, God, for your grace and your mercy. God, we just thank you, God, for being God all by yourself. And God, as we go ahead and embark in your holy ordinance, God, we ask right now that you decrease me as you increase me with your Holy Spirit, God, to be able to give your people an inspiring word, an encouraging word, a word that will equip them, a word that will empower them, and a word that will impact their lives. And God, we ask that we trust in you and believe in you throughout this whole actual experience, God, this virtual experience, that even through a pandemic, God, you speak and nothing can silence your voice, God. So we ask right now, God, that you continue to move us in this vein. Allow your word to be the inspiration. Allow your word to be the illumination. Allow your word to give us confirmation in this thing called life as we go through it. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We pray, amen. As we go ahead and go to the scriptures today, we're going to be coming out of the gospel according to Matthews. It's the New Testament. The gospel according to Matthews. And if you could run your fingers all the way to the actual 14th chapter of Matthews will be coming from the English Standard Version today. The 14th chapter of Matthews coming from the 22nd to the 33rd verse this morning. Uh, and as the scripture comes up on the screen, the reading of God's word goes this wise. It says, immediately he made the disciples get into the boat. This is Jesus. And go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. And after he had dismissed the crowd, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat by this time was a long way from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And then the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, it is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the, the wind, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. And someone this morning may be asking God to save them right now. And Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took him, saying to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. If I could go back up to the actual 29th verse, and it says, he said, come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. And if I could take that actual text right there, the 29th verse, and speak to you for a moment from a topic. Facing a God-sized challenge. Facing a God-sized challenge. See, facing challenges reminds us that we are stronger and more capable than we give ourselves credit for. And our challenges help us to gain clarity into what we want and also helps to define who we really are in Christ Jesus. And throughout our lives, we all have faced some brick walls some form of obstacles. However, those brick walls serve as a greater purpose for us because they were placed within our life story to help shape and mold us into who God created us 
to be today. Because those brick walls were there to challenge us and not to separate us. Let, let me say that again. Those brick walls were there to challenge us and not <clears throat> to separate us from the individuals who are not willing to put in the time, the effort, or dedication to achieve their dreams because they really didn't want it badly enough. Because see, there is plenty of people, church, who have faced some of the same challenges that you and I may be facing today. And their walls were even higher than yours and mine. And they were able to make it over to the other side. See, don't miss this. I'm talking to somebody. See, your walls were not placed to keep you out. But they were only put there to see how badly you really wanted something. Come on. And, and God told me to tell someone today that he's trying to bring out your creative side so that you can tap into and tap inside what he has placed within you so that you can reach the other side to achieve what he has already promised you. So I need you to text someone this morning and tell them that God is not holding me up in this season. He's only making me stronger in this season so that my true identity can be transparent. I'm trying to help somebody. See, he's making you stronger so that you can be more marketable. Come on. He's making you stronger so that your opinions will be missed when you're not presently in the room. Come on, somebody. He's making you stronger so that people will see you as the difference that will make a difference. Come on, somebody. Because here it is. You are purposely driven and not position driven. Come on, somebody. See, many people try to get things and they seek the title of certain things. But when you have the purpose of God on your life, he will place you appropriately right where you're supposed to be. So do I have anybody this morning right now that understand that it's not about the position that will drive you. It is the purpose that will drive you and push you to the other side. I'm trying to help someone here this morning. So tell someone, don't get it twisted because my life may look bad right now. Come on. And it may not look like yours, but it is only because I'm heading into some new territory that you may never be able to cross over into. I'm trying to help somebody. This is why you may not look like what you've been through in this season in 2020. Come on. Because everyone left you when you were going through the process before you reached your final destination. I'm trying to help somebody. So text someone and tell them I'm headed into some new territory. I'm going into a place where it's going to challenge me. I'm heading into a place that is going to push me. I'm heading to a place that is going to make me better than what I am today. And it's going to require me to have the purpose of God on my life to be able to make it and not be looking for a position that I'll fail in trying to get there. And then in this text today, as we get into this text, we see that Peter one of Jesus' disciples are heading into some new territory this morning, church, by walking on water. And in the Gospel of Mark and in the Gospel of John, it tells us the same story. However, only in the book of Matthews that we learn that Peter walked on water like Jesus did. And, and when this passage of scripture is usually preached, the focus is on Peter sinking after he began walking on the water. And, and Peter has been highly criticized for that, for falling and failing to continue to walk on the water. But what is so fascinating about this text is that ever since Peter walked on water. I have yet to see anyone else except Jesus accomplish the same task. And as we examine Peter walking on water today, 
I believe that we can learn how to deal with our God-sized challenges that may be heading our way, church. And the one thing we need to understand that when dealing with our God-sized challenges is that, here it is, we must leave what is comfortable to reach new opportunities. Come on. We must leave what is comfortable to us to be able to reach the new opportunities that are out there waiting for us. You'll see it in verse 29. It says that he said, come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. Catch this. Peter got out of the boat where he was comfortable and walked on the water, which was a new opportunity. Follow me here. See, the difference between being comfortable, church, and reaching your new opportunity is that they both exist on two different islands. Come on, somebody. Meaning, 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 here it is. There must be a crossover in order to reach your new opportunity from a position of being comfortable. Come on. And see, Peter had to have faith in Jesus to be able to leave the comfort of the boat during a storm to embark on a new opportunity to walk on the water. See, let me help you out. See, faith is simply taking the next step. And Peter's next step required him to leave the boat of comfortability to step into the water of opportunity. You better hear me here. And as long as Peter was focusing on Jesus, his steps were secure. Catch this. But when he allowed his focus to shift to his circumstance, which was the wind, he got into trouble and lost sight of his very next step. And here it is, church. See, fear, having fear will sink you. Come on. But your faith will keep you afloat. You better hear me here. See, being fearful will sink you from your opportunities. But having faith will keep you afloat to reach your new opportunities. Come on. And fear will drown you. But your faith will rescue you by giving you a lifeboat. You better hear me here. And God told me to tell someone today to don't allow what is comfortable in your life to keep a hold of you and control you from making better decisions that will create a productive future for your life. Come on, I need you to catch this. See, don't allow the fear of what you may lose in this season to affect what you could gain in the next season. I'm trying to help you. See, don't allow what just a place, don't allow a, a, a place of security, here it is, to stop you from reaching your true place of comfort. Come on. See, don't allow someone that what they do for you to stop you from believing that you cannot do it for yourself. Come on, somebody. See, stop selling for what is comfortable in your life and start striving for better opportunities for your life. Because if God be for you, you won't hear me here, who can stand against you? Come on, somebody. You got to stop being comfortable in the things that are disappointing you. You got to stop being comfortable in the things that are rejecting you. Come on. You got to stop being comfortable in the things that can no longer support you. And you got to start believing that there is a higher power that has been placed inside of you. And God told me to tell someone today that you got to stop being fearful because fear will keep you in a place of comfortability. Fear will keep you in a place of security. But fear will never get you to the place of the new opportunity that he has bestowed for you. Because as long as Peter remained focused on Jesus, I'm back to the text, his faith carried him. Come on, I need you to help here. But as soon as he allowed his circumstance to become bigger than Jesus, church, he lost his focus and he got buried in his circumstance. And watch this. God told me to tell someone, 
He says that in order for you to reach your new territory, you cannot keep looking at things the same way that you used to see them. I'm trying to help somebody. Because see, just because people don't see your potential, come on, does not mean that you don't have any potential. Come on, somebody. See, just because you don't look the part, come on, does not mean that you can't play the part. You better hear me here. Just because they don't see it in you does not mean that God has not placed it within you. See, don't allow yourself to become comfortable in how other people see you in this season, but remain focused on what your creator placed inside of you when he made you. Come on, somebody. This is why the Bible tells us that greater is he that is in me than it is in the world. I'm trying to help somebody here this morning. You got to get out of that place of comfortability. Something is just pulling me this morning that you're settling to stay in a place of comfortability. Let me see if I can explain this thing. Can I push this thing a little deeper this morning to help you here? Let me see if I can help you out. Because see, many of you right now don't know your value. Come on. Many people don't understand their true value. That, that, let me see if I can explain this. There was a father who had a daughter that graduated with honors. And he gave her a car that required, that required uh, many years ago that he got this car many years ago. But before he gave her the car, he asked her to take the used car downtown and, and tell them how much would they offer her if she choose to sell it. Watch this. So his daughter went downtown to a used car lot and returned to her father and said, Daddy, they offered me $1,000 because they said that the car looked very worn out. So the father said, okay, sweetheart, take that same car to the pawn shop and ask them how much would they offer you if you were to sell the car to them. And so the young daughter took the car to the pawn shop. And when she got to the pawn shop, the pawn shop offered her $100 because they said that it was a very old car. So the father asked his daughter, okay, I want you to do one more thing for me before you go ahead and you decide on those two. He says, there's a car club across town. And, 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 and I want you to go to the clock, car club show. And I want you to show them that same car. So the daughter took the car to the car club and then returned to tell her father, some people in the club offer her $100,000 church for the car because it was a Nissan Skyline in R34 meaning it was an iconic car, a rare car, and it was sought after by many people. And the father said to his daughter, as I will tell you right now, he says, I wanted you to know that the right place values you the right way. I, I'm talking to somebody here. He says, I want you to understand that when you go to the right place, it will value you the right way. Come on, somebody. Here it is. And God told me to tell someone today, if you are not being valued, don't get angry anymore. It only means that you are in the wrong place. And never stay in a place with someone that does not treat you or give you what you are truly worth. I'm trying to help somebody. Because those who know your true value will be the ones who will truly appreciate who you are. Because you have been bought with a price. Come on, somebody. That no one can ever match. Jesus paid for you on the cross. So stop lowering your value, your true value, by staying in unproductive situations that are not allowing you to move to where God wants you to be. Stop lowering your value for selling with folks who don't see the value. Stop setting, setting in things. Well, people can't see that you are a rare breed. Come on, somebody. Stop letting people not understand that you are a diamond in the gym. Come on, somebody. And that there are not many 
or any like you in this season. Come on, somebody. And if somebody has you, come on, that they have an actual iconic individual, something that is a rare breed, and it is the value that you have that they should love about you and that you can add value to their life. Come on. If they learn how to appreciate you, come on, somebody. I'm talking to somebody this morning here. You're in an unproductive place right now, and people are not valuing you. You're settling in different places right now, and you're not being appreciated. But God told me to tell you this morning, stop staying in undervalued places where people don't even know the true worth of who you really are. Lord have mercy. I'm trying to help somebody here. So I'm trying to help somebody here. Stop being undervalued. Because if you're trying to be a person that is trying to get to a place that is productive, you got to make sure that people value who you really are. But as I get back into the text, can I go a little deeper in this text and explain something to you? Another thing I want you to see before I move on to my second point is that the only disciples that, that got out of the boat was Peter during the storm. But the remaining 11 stayed and observed Peter to see what would happen. I, I, I'm trying to help somebody here. See, this is a true indication that just because you had certain people that came along with you, come on somebody, it does not mean that they will stay committed to you when you are pursuing new opportunities. Because see, in your life, church, there's gonna be some drop-offs, come on. You're gonna have to drop off some folks here. You're gonna have to drop off some folks there. And you're gonna have some people that drop their own self off. Come on, somebody. There's gonna be a drop-off in this season because you're heading to something new. And when you go to something new, you're gonna know who is fake and who's real. You see, fake friends are like a shadow. Come on, somebody. You can only see them during your brightest moment, but when they, but but they are not nowhere around to be found in your darkest hour. Come on, you can only find those fake friends when the sun is shining, when the glitter is glowing. But when you're going through something, man, you can't find them suckers. I'm trying to help somebody here. This is why, as soon as your environment change. It will show you who is faithful to you and who will support you when you make that life change. And so you have to always remember that when pursuing new opportunities, when you're trying to pursue new opportunities, you have to learn what is comfortable in your life. But watch this. But not only that, you must leave what is not comfortable, but you must also you must also, watch this, you must trust God plan fully. You must leave what is comfortable, but you must also trust God's plan fully. You'll see it in verse 30 here as I move forward. It says, but when, the sun, when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink. And he cried out, Lord, save me. Let me say it. He said, but when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. See, I have read this text many times. But what God revealed to me that allowed me to ask the most critical question of all, and that is, how did Peter see the wind? Uh, it, it blows my mind. How did Peter see the wind? See, he may have saw the effects of the wind, but I have never known anyone to see the wind physically. Check this out. Which leads me to believe that Peter was leaning on his own understanding about the effects of the wind over maintaining faith in Jesus. I'm trying to help somebody here. Can I explain this to you a little deeper here? Proverbs 3 and 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Follow me here. 
And what this means is that even if things doesn't make sense, always follow the word of God. I need you to follow me here. And, 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 and it is our understanding, church, that causes us to believe in what we think we know, but not maintaining trust what God already knows. Come on. See, it makes us think that we know something, but we don't maintain trust in what God already knows. Meaning Peter understanding was the only thing that was hindering him from a God's moment. You better hear me here. Because he anticipated and believed in the effects that the wind had over his situation, but not trusted in the one who had the power over the wind to control his situation. And see, our faith, church, is developed through our struggles. Catch me here. See, our faith is developed through our struggles. Because if you ask people what faith really is, most of them will answer this by saying this. They will say faith is believing even though you don't have evidence. They will tell you Hebrews 11 and 1, that now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Catch this. But that is not the definition of what true faith is. I need you to hear me here. I'm teaching now. See, faith is not believing in spite of the evidence. Come on, somebody. But faith is obeying in spite of the consequences. Come on, somebody. See, faith is obeying in spite of your circumstance. I'm talking to somebody. See, faith is trusting in the process when even when it doesn't make any sense to you. Come on, somebody. See, faith says, here it is, I will do what the Lord says, even though it means I will struggle when I do it, come on, and even though it will be difficult and complicated, I will still trust in God. Because see, Peter, greatest adversary, was not the wind keeping him from walking on the water, but it was his lack of understanding that Jesus could keep him from falling when he started to walk on the water. And God told me to tell someone today that when you're facing something that you truly don't understand, don't try to figure it out. Just trust in him and know that he's already figured it out for you. Come on, somebody. See, when you have more money than month, come on, somebody. Come on. Or you have more month than money, come on. God says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Come on nor see begging for bread. Come on, somebody. See, God has it all figured out for you. See, when you have more problems than a peace of mind, God says that the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. See, I'm trying to help you. See, God has it all figured out. See, when you have more enemies than friends, God says no weapon, come on, form against you shall prosper. See, God has it all figured out for you. When you're in a situation and don't understand how you will get out of that situation, God says, is there anything, come on somebody, too hard for him to handle? Because see, God has it all figured out. So I need you to stop anticipating your outcome in this season and trust in a God that has already determined your outcome in this season. Tell someone that my struggle is only evidence that God has something bigger waiting for me on the other side. See, you're struggling. You're going through this thing. But because the reason why you're struggling is because God has something bigger on the other side for you. And he's already figured it out for you. See, it doesn't make sense that everyone else has it easy. And it doesn't make sense to you that you can see everybody else like their life is easy and peaches and cream. Come on. It doesn't make sense that you have to keep dealing with the same issues over and over again. It doesn't make sense to you that you have to keep struggling, but no one else seems to be struggling. And the reason is that your blessing requires much more from you because here it is, too much is given. Come on, somebody. Much will be required. I'm trying to help you. Too much is given. Much is required from you. And God says, I'm taking you through a whole lot. Because I got a whole lot waiting on you. 
I'm taking you through a whole lot of situations because I got greater blessings waiting for you. And because much will be given to you, I'm going to require much out of you in this season. Lord, have mercy. Help me, Holy Ghost. Help me, Holy Ghost. Some of you wondering why you're constantly going through it. Why you're constantly dealing with it. Why things seem never to go your way. And God says, much is required when much is given. See, when I'm trying to give you something bigger, when I'm trying to give you something better, I'm going to require you to go through more than the average person. Come on, somebody. I'm going to have to require you to go through some things that other people are not willing to go through. And he says, once you get through it, I just want you to understand, what much is required of you, I'll give more to you. To whom much is given, he says, much will be required. What I'm going to give to you, I'm going to require a whole lot more from you. You're going to have to dig in in this season, E.E.I. -E You're going to have to dig into your problems and your circumstances your situation. In order for you to get to that new opportunity, in order for you to crawl your wall, in order for you to get to the other side, God says, to whom much is given, Lord have mercy, much will be required of you. Lord have mercy. But as I go ahead and hasten to get out of here, lastly, when you're facing that God-sized challenge that's standing in your way, it's going to require you, here it is, never to forget that God is in it with you. Lord have mercy. Never forget that God is in it with you. Lord have mercy. You'll see it in verse 32. It says, and when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. It says, when they got into the boat, church, the wind ceased. See, one of the biggest issues that we all face when dealing with a God-sized challenge is that we quickly forget that we are not in it all by ourselves. And in verse 32, it explains to us that the wind ceased when Jesus and Peter got back into the boat with the other disciples. Meaning, here it is, the storm was never in control of the situation. Oh, come on. Because it was also, it also means, here it is, that the storm had to be controlled by a higher power. Lord have mercy. So the storm was never in control of the situation. But the storm had to be controlled by a higher power. I don't need you to miss this blessing because I'm out the door here. See, the disciples was never left by themselves while they were in the storm. Lord have mercy. They were never left by themselves. The disciples was never in any danger while they were in the storm. Come on. See, the disciples were never supposed to deal with the storm all by themselves. I'm trying to help somebody. Because Jesus was in total control of the storm to test his disciples to see if they would be more worried about their circumstance or would they see him with them while they were dealing with their circumstance. I'm trying to help somebody here. And God told me to tell someone today that your storm is not the problem that you need to be worried about because he has it all under control. He says the report from the doctor is not the problem no more because God can handle that situation all by himself. He says that your finances is not the problem because he has that under control. What he wants to know, here it is, if you can see him, come on somebody, while you're going through your problem because he's already working it out for your good. So you need to stop looking at your walls. Stop looking at your circumstance that are standing in your way right now and look at God in your circumstance. Lord have mercy. Instead of looking at your medical condition, start looking at God who can change your medical condition Instead of losing sleep at night, come on somebody, start looking at a God who can restore your sleep back at night, come on somebody, 
Because as soon as Jesus get into your boat, come on somebody, all of your problems, all of your issues, all of your pain, come on, all of your rejections, all of your disappointment will have to cease because he has the power to take over and be in total control. And I need someone to get that this morning. You're sitting there looking at your situation. You're sitting there fighting your situation. You're sitting there trying to deal with your situation all by yourself. But God says, you need to worry about that. He says, I'm already in it with you. And you need to understand that I have the power to take total control. Come on, somebody. So you need to focus on God. Focus on the God who has the power to solve your problems rather than worrying about your problems and trying to fight your own problems all by yourself. Because see, the Bible tells us in Deuteronomy 31 and 8, he says, the Lord himself will go before you, Lord have mercy. He will be with you, and he will not leave you or forget you. Come on, somebody, and don't be afraid, and don't worry. And what you need to understand is that God's already got you. No matter how big it may seem, God is in control, and God is always with you. No matter how actually, how tough it may be, God is with you. He's only cultivating and preparing you for the blessing on the other side. When you're dealing with a God-sized challenge, you need to understand that God is always going to be with you. And he's going to test you and prepare you until you reach the other side. And for someone right now, you're looking for a new opportunity. And every time you reach, try to reach it, it seems like something is blocking you. Don't worry about that right now. God says, I'm preparing you in this season. Every time you think that you're going to get there, God says, maybe what you're holding on to is stopping you from getting there. See, the one thing you have to understand that Peter was not afraid of. Peter was not afraid of an opportunity. And some of you are stuck in the boat because you're comfortable. Some of you are staying in that boat because you're scared to move, because you think you're going to fall, you think you're going to fail. But God told me, this ain't your season for failing. This is your season of elevating. And you got to be ready to move. Don't matter how tough it looks, don't matter how difficult it may be, you need to know your value. Stop allowing people to put you in situations that lowers your value. You know your potential. You know what you're capable of. And you know what you bring to the table. It's time for you to start allowing people to lose, use you for who you really are. So when you're faced with a God-sized challenge, make sure you understand and know that God is in it with you. And that allows you to know that there's nothing too hard for God that you won't be able to accomplish in this season. So this is the word that God has put on my heart for you today. To start off this month of September, you're going to face some God-sized challenges. Some of you are in that challenge right now. Some of you are sitting there fighting trying to make it through it. But God says, I got that. I just need you to see me in it with you. I just need you to know that I will never leave, nor forsake you. I just want you to know that I'm always going to be there with you. And I will never forget you. Because you are destined to be great. And if this word has blessed someone, to let you know that you're in this place, and this is your confirmation, that you've been fighting against something, go ahead and just put the word confirmation. Say, God, I've been fighting against them folks on my job for a long time. It's time for me to be able to move over that wall. God, I've been fighting against certain individuals in this relationship. It's time for me to get over that wall. Because people have been undervaluing me for such a long time. And it's time for me to get over that wall. And God, is, I'm hearing the Spirit of God speak to me right now saying, this is your time that you will get over your wall. This is your time that you will face your God-sized challenge. And with God, you will make it through to the other side. Man, give God some praise, man. Give God some, 
some glory right now for this powerful word that he's put in me, for this God-sized challenge that he has for someone who's been facing it. God says, you've been pushing. You've been doing your best to try to get through it. But he says, you've been allowing your circumstance to dictate you and not looking at me in your circumstance to be able to help you to get through it. Amen. So EI, as we get ready to get out of here, if there's someone right now who wants to give their life to Christ, this is an opportunity right now. God is calling on you right now. The Bible says in the book of Romans 10 and 9, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died and God raised from the dead, you are saved. So God is calling you right now. Is God pulling on your heart right now? If you feel God is pulling you to be a part of this ministry, this is a time where you go to our website at www.eimin2020.com and be a part of this ministry. You can join this ministry. And so that when we open up the doors, you can be a part of this ministry. God's calling you right now. Yes, he's calling you. Come on. Will you answer him today? Because God is calling you. He's calling you in right now. You need to come on. Yes. He's calling you. Come on. Not only that, if you want to give in this ministry, as our information come up, you can be a good You can give, not grudgingly, not of necessity, but be cheerful in your giving. And know that God is looking at your heart, not the amount. Because you can give and have an attitude. We want you to give based off the gratitude. You know that you love God and you love the people of God. Yes, indeed. So if you want to give your offering right now, you can do it via Cash App. You can do it via actual PayPal. Or you can mail it in. But not only that, we're still actually pushing the EI ministry left to our feet. Left to our feet to where we actually purchase shoes. We'll give money to those who are less fortunate or those who a part of the ministry that we want to go ahead and support our young youth, those in high school, those in middle school, to be able to give them a pair of shoes so they can walk and not worry about being bullied if they're struggling trying to make ends meet. We know that some people are not working in this pandemic, but if we can be a blessing, we truly will be a blessing to them. Amen. So EI, as we get ready to get out of here, I pray that this message bless you right now. And I want you to know that God is calling you right now. He's calling on you right now. He's waiting on you to answer. Yes, indeed. You got to get ready to, for what God has for you this season. Always know that whatever you're going through, whatever you're going to be dealing with, there are going to be challenges. There's going to be sacrifice. And you're going to have to push through it. You're going to have to try to make it to the other side. But you just need to know that God is going to be with you in it and through it. And God is going to make sure that you're victorious because you don't fight for victory. You fight from victory. And it's already yours. It's already yours. So as we get ready to get out of here, he's calling. He's calling you. Yes, he wants you to answer. Come on. He's calling you. Yes, he is. He's calling. I want you to come to be a part of this ministry. He's calling you. Come on now. Don't quit on me. He's calling you. Let's get a little bit of praise on the way out the door. Yes. Calling. And he's waiting on your answer. May God bless you, man. I love you, and I'll see you soon. Share this word and pass it to someone and say, hey, 
whenever I'm facing my God challenge, I know God will be calling me, and I will answer him. And God bless you. I love you, man. And I'll see you soon. Yeah, share this word.